DDE, Energy ETF Cash Cow or Risky Roller Coaster? Hey everyone, welcome back to Chad ETF. Today, we're cracking open the hood of a popular energy sector ETF, the Vanguard Energy Dividend Appreciation ETF, ticker symbol VDE. Now, VDE promises exposure to the energy sector, potentially hefty returns, and even some dividend income. Sounds pretty sweet, right? But before you jump in, there's more to the story. Is VDE a perfectly diversified dream machine or a risky roller coaster ride tied to the fate of big oil? We're about to dive deep and find out. Stick around, and together, we'll see if VDE deserves a spot in your portfolio. Question 1. What is the expense ratio of VDE compared to other energy sector ETFs? DDE stands out for its very low expense ratio compared to other energy sector ETFs. Here's a breakdown. DDE expense ratio, 0, 10%. This is a very attractive expense ratio. It means that for every $10,000 invested in VDE, you'd pay only $10 annually in fees. Average expense ratio of similar funds, 1, 0, 2%. This is over 10 times higher than VDE's expense ratio. This average is based on data from Morningstar, a leading financial data provider. Why expense ratio matters The expense ratio is a critical factor to consider when choosing an ETF. It represents the annual fee you pay as a percentage of your investment. Lower expense ratios mean you keep more of your returns. In the context of VDE's low expense ratio, this translates to Cost savings Over time, the lower expense ratio of VDE can lead to significant cost savings compared to other energy ETFs. This can have a substantial impact on your overall returns. Focus on underlying investments A low expense ratio indicates that VDE spends less on operational costs allowing the ETF to focus more on the underlying energy sector investments. Here's a point to consider. Non-diversification risk, VDE is considered a somewhat non-diversified ETF, meaning it holds a smaller number of companies compared to some other energy sector ETFs. While this can potentially lead to higher returns, it also comes with the risk of being more impacted by the performance of individual companies. DDE's exceptionally low expense ratio makes it a compelling choice for investors seeking exposure to the energy sector. However, it's important to weigh this advantage against the ETF's non-diversification risk when making your investment decision. You might also consider comparing DDE's holdings to other energy sector ETFs to see if it aligns with your investment goals. Question 2 how liquid is VDE compared to other energy sector ETFs? DDE is considered a very liquid ETF compared to other energy sector ETFs. Liquidity refers to how easily you can buy and sell an ETF at its fair market price. Here's a breakdown of why VDE is liquid and how it compares to others. Factors contributing to VDE's liquidity High trading volume, VDE boasts a high average daily trading volume, which signifies many shares are typically bought and sold each day, 1. This translates to a higher chance of finding a buyer or seller when you want to enter or exit your VDE position. Large asset under management, AUM VDE has a significant amount of total assets invested in the ETF, AUM, 3. This indicates a large investor base and greater interest in the ETF, contributing to its overall liquidity. Market cap focus, VDE primarily invests in large capitalization, cap, energy companies. Large cap stocks tend to have higher trading volumes compared to smaller companies, further enhancing VDE's liquidity. Comparison with other energy sector ETFs while VDE is generally considered liquid, it's helpful to compare it with alternatives. XLE, SPDR Energy Select Sector Fund XLE is another prominent energy sector ETF known for its high liquidity. 
It often trades even higher daily volumes than VDE, 1. However, the expense ratio of XLE might be slightly higher than VDE. Funny, Fidelity MSCI Energy Index ETF Funny is another liquid option, although its trading volume might be lower than VDE or XLE, 1. It offers a slightly different weighting methodology compared to VDE, potentially impacting performance. Less liquid options, some smaller, more niche energy sector ETFs might have lower trading volumes, making them less liquid than VDE or XLE. These might cater to specific segments within the energy sector, but may be harder to enter or exit positions in. Liquidity and your investment strategy. Focus on short-term trading. If you plan on frequent buying and selling of your ETF position, then liquidity becomes even more critical. DDE's high liquidity makes it a suitable choice for such strategies. Long-term investment. While liquidity is still important for long-term investors, it might not be the top priority. Factors like expense ratio and diversification might hold more weight in such cases. DDE stands out as a highly liquid ETF within the energy sector. This is due to its high trading volume, large AUM, and focus on large cap companies. However, it's always wise to compare VDE with other options based on your specific investment goals and risk tolerance. If frequent buying and selling are part of your strategy, VDE's liquidity becomes a significant advantage. Question 3. What is VDE's portfolio turnover rate? How frequently does the underlying holdings change? VDE's portfolio turnover rate is 9% as reported for the fiscal year ending August 31, 2023. This metric indicates the frequency at which the underlying holdings of the ETF are bought and sold. Here's a breakdown of what a 9% turnover rate means for VDE. Relatively low turnover, compared to the average expense ratio of 1. 2% for similar energy sector ETFs, a 9% turnover rate signifies VDE trades its holdings less frequently. This aligns with its passively managed nature, where the focus is on tracking a benchmark index rather than actively picking stocks. Holding period, a 9% turnover rate translates to an average holding period of roughly 11. 1 years, 1 slash 0, 0 9. This suggests that VDE tends to hold on to its underlying stocks for a relatively long time. Factors Affecting Portfolio Turnover Tracking Index Since VDE tracks a benchmark index, its portfolio turnover is primarily driven by changes in the composition of that index. The index provider might add or remove companies based on predefined criteria. Rebalancing Needs VDE might need to rebalance its holdings periodically to ensure they continue to reflect the target weightings of the underlying index. Impact of Portfolio Turnover Transaction Costs Every time VDE buys or sells a holding, it incurs transaction costs. A lower turnover rate like 9% helps minimize these costs, ultimately benefiting investors through lower expense ratios. Tax Implications Frequent buying and selling of holdings can lead to taxable capital gains for investors holding VDE in taxable accounts. A lower turnover rate helps mitigate this impact. Comparison with other energy sector ETFs The 9% turnover rate of VDE is considered low compared to the category average. Here's some context. Actively managed funds Actively managed energy sector ETFs might have significantly higher turnover rates, potentially exceeding 100% annually, as they constantly buy and sell holdings based on their investment strategies. Other index ETFs, some passively managed energy sector ETFs that track different indexes might have slightly higher or lower turnover rates than VDE, depending on the volatility and rebalancing frequency of their underlying index. VDE's 9% portfolio turnover rate reflects its passive management style and focus on long-term holdings. 
This translates to lower transaction costs and potentially reduced tax implications for investors. It's a positive attribute for investors seeking a stable and cost-effective way to gain exposure to the energy sector. Question 4. What is the current sector allocation of VDE? DDE sector allocation leans heavily towards the energy sector, with some minor allocations to other categories. Here's a breakdown of its current allocation. As of a recent date, actual data might vary slightly. Energy minerals, 76 to 77 percent. This is the primary focus of VDE, encompassing companies involved in the exploration, production, and transportation of oil, natural gas, and other energy resources. Industrial services, 19 to 20 percent. This sector includes companies that provide services to the energy industry, such as oil field services, engineering, and construction firms. Their performance is often tied to the health of the energy sector. Other sectors, up to 4%, this minor allocation might include holdings in utilities, process industries, transportation, non-energy minerals, producer manufacturing, and distribution services. These typically represent a very small portion of the overall portfolio. Understanding VDE Sector Allocation Focus on energy, DDE's dominant allocation to energy minerals reflects its core objective of providing exposure to the energy sector. Indirect energy exposure, the industrial services allocation provides some indirect exposure to the energy sector through companies that support energy production. Limited diversification, the minimal allocation to other sectors suggests VDE is not particularly diversified. This can be a risk factor, as the ETF's performance will be heavily influenced by the energy sector's performance. Benefits and Risks of VDE Sector Allocation Potential for high returns, the energy sector can experience periods of significant growth, and VDE's concentrated allocation might lead to higher returns in such scenarios. Increased volatility, the energy sector is known for its volatility, meaning its stock prices can fluctuate considerably. DDE's focus on this sector amplifies this risk, potentially leading to larger swings in the ETF's price. Limited exposure to other sectors, investors seeking broader diversification across different industries might find VDE's allocation less suitable. Where to find VDE sector allocation? ETF provider website, Vanguard, the provider of VDE, typically publishes the ETF's holdings and sector allocation on their website. Financial websites. Financial websites like ETF Database or YCharts often provide up-to-date sector allocation information for ETFs like VDE. DDE's sector allocation is heavily weighted towards the energy sector, offering concentrated exposure with the potential for high returns and increased volatility. Investors should understand this allocation and weigh it against their risk tolerance and diversification goals before investing in VDE. Question 5. Does VDE hold mostly large-cap, mid-cap, or small-cap energy companies? DDE primarily invests in large-cap energy companies. Here's a breakdown of why and its implications. Investment Style VDE is classified as a large-cap value ETF. This means it focuses on holding stocks of established, financially stable companies with large market capitalizations. Portfolio Composition According to VDE's holdings data, a significant portion, over 65%, of the ETF's assets are invested in the top 10 holdings, which are all large-cap energy companies. Benefits of large-cap focus O stability, large-cap companies tend to be more stable with lower stock price volatility compared to mid-cap or small-cap companies. This can contribute to a smoother overall ride for VDE investors. O liquidity, large-cap stocks are typically more liquid, meaning they can be bought and sold easily. This aligns with VDE's high overall liquidity. 
O dividend income, large cap energy companies are often established players with a history of paying dividends. DDE offers a quarterly dividend distribution, potentially providing investors with a steady income stream. Drawbacks of large cap focus O lower growth potential, large cap companies generally have less room for explosive growth compared to smaller, high growth companies. DDE's focus on large cap might limit its potential for high returns, particularly during bull markets. O limited exposure to emerging markets, many smaller energy companies might be based in emerging markets, which VD's large cap focus might not capture. Comparison with other energy sector ETFs While VDE focuses on large cap, there are other energy sector ETFs that target different market capitalizations. Mid-cap energy ETFs these ETFs invest in companies with smaller market capitalizations than large cap companies. They might offer higher growth potential, but also come with increased volatility. Small cap energy ETFs, these ETFs focus on even smaller companies and can offer the highest growth potential but also carry the highest risk of volatility and potential for failure. DDE's focus on large-cap energy companies caters to investors seeking a stable and relatively low volatility exposure to the energy sector. It offers benefits like stability, liquidity, and potential dividend income. However, this focus might limit its growth potential compared to mid-cap or small-cap energy ETFs. When choosing an energy sector ETF, Consider your risk tolerance and investment goals to determine if VD's large cap focus aligns with your strategy. Question 6. What is the concentration of VD's holdings in the top 10 or 20 companies? DD is known for its concentration in its top holdings, particularly within the top 10. Here's a breakdown of its concentration and what it implies. Concentration in top holdings. Over 65% of VDE's total assets are invested in its top 10 holdings. This signifies a significant level of concentration within a small number of companies. Top 20 holdings. While data beyond the top 10 isn't readily available for free, it's safe to assume that the top 20 holdings likely represent an even greater percentage of the ETF's total assets, potentially exceeding 70%. Implications of concentration O oh, amplified sector performance. The performance of VDE will be heavily influenced by the performance of its top holdings, all of which are large cap energy companies. If these companies perform well, the ETF will likely see strong returns. However, if they underperform, the impact on VDE's price could be magnified. O oh, limited diversification. This concentration reduces diversification, a strategy that aims to mitigate risk by spreading investments across various companies and asset classes. With VDE, a downturn in the energy sector or even a few large energy companies could significantly impact the ETF's value. Benefits of Concentration O Potential for High Returns If the company's VDE invests and experience strong growth, the ETF's price could significantly appreciate due to its concentrated holdings. Comparison with other ETFs The level of concentration in VDE is higher than some other ETFs, particularly those that follow a broad market capitalization strategy. Here's some context. Broad market ETFs, these ETFs typically hold hundreds or even thousands of companies which reduces the impact of any single holding on the overall ETF performance. Some sector ETFs, even within sector ETFs, some might be more diversified than VDE by holding a larger number of companies across different market capitalizations within the sector. DDE's concentration in its top holdings amplifies the impact of the energy sector's performance on the ETF's price. This can be a risk factor but it also presents the potential for higher returns if the underlying companies perform well. Consider your risk tolerance and diversification needs before investing in VDE. 
If you prefer a more balanced approach, broader market ETFs or other energy sector ETFs with wider holdings might be more suitable options. Question 7. Are there any individual company holdings in VDE that raise concentration risk? Yes, VDE's concentration in its top holdings raises concentration risk and some specific companies within those top holdings might contribute more to this risk than others. Here's why. Dependence on individual performance, since a significant portion, over 65%, of VDE's assets are invested in its top 10 holdings, the performance of each company has a magnified impact on the overall ETF's price. Factors affecting concentration risk. O Company Weighting the specific weighting of each company within the top 10 matters. If a single company represents a much larger portion of the ETF's holdings than others, its impact on VDE's price is even greater. O Company Risk Profile The inherent risk profile of each company also plays a role. Companies with a history of high stock price volatility or facing significant industry challenges might contribute more to concentration risk. Challenges in identifying specific risky holdings. Limited public data. While VDE discloses its top 10 holdings, specific weightings for each company within that group might require a paid subscription to financial data providers. Dynamic holdings. The composition of VDE's holdings can change over time as the underlying index it tracks rebalances. General considerations for concentration risk. Review top 10 holdings. Analyze the sectors, industries, and overall financial health of the companies in VDE's top 10 holdings available through the ETF provider website or financial news sources. Research company risk profiles. If possible, delve deeper into the specific companies that raise concerns regarding volatility, industry risks, or financial stability. Consider diversification. If the concentration risk associated with VDE's top holdings is concerning, explore other energy sector ETFs with a broader range of holdings across different market capitalizations. Question 8. How does VDE's portfolio beta compare to the overall market and other energy sector ETFs? VDE's portfolio beta likely has a higher beta compared to the overall market and potentially even some other energy sector ETFs. Here's a breakdown of what beta means and how it applies to VDE. Understanding beta, beta measures the volatility of an investment relative to the overall market, represented by an index like the SP500. A beta of 1 indicates the investment's price movement mirrors the market. A beta greater than 1 suggests the investment is likely to be more volatile than the market, and vice versa for a beta less than 1. VDE's beta and the energy sector, since VDE focuses on the energy sector, its beta is inherently expected to be higher than the overall market. The energy sector is known for its cyclical nature and can experience periods of higher volatility compared to the broader market. Concentration impact, VDE's concentration in its top holdings further amplifies its beta. If the companies it invests in experience significant price swings, the impact on VDE's price will be magnified, leading to potentially higher volatility. Comparing VDE's beta Here's how VDE's beta might compare to others. Overall market, SP500 The SP500 has a beta of roughly 1, by definition. So, VDE's beta is likely to be higher than 1. Broader energy sector ETFs, some energy sector ETFs that hold a wider range of companies across different market capitalizations might have slightly lower betas than VDE due to diversification. Mid-cap or small-cap energy ETFs, these ETFs might have even higher betas than VDE due to the inherently higher volatility of smaller companies. VDE's focus on the energy sector and its concentrated holdings likely lead to a higher beta compared to the overall market. Investors seeking a more stable option might consider broader energy sector ETFs or those with lower betas. 
However, the higher beta of VDE also translates to the potential for amplified returns if the energy sector experiences strong growth.